Good morning, my friends. Today, it's another beautiful sunny day. It definitely looks very cold outside today also. So um, definitely want to get out though and get some sun while I still can. It's very hard to catch in sun since I work nights. I generally sleep in a little bit later. So, um, you know, I pretty much only have a window of opportunity to get the sun, which is like around like four hours, so to speak, which is very not a lot of time. And it's, uh, you know, getting shorter and shorter as the winter progresses um, until we hit uh, the winter solstice, so to speak. So I do have work tonight. Um, probably going to spend the day, clean up my apartment a little bit because it's, uh, it's getting a little bit messy. So I think I'm going to do that today, uh, focus on that and just clean up everything. Um, but today I'm going to be talking a little bit about art versus business. And these are two concepts that um, have been kind of fighting a little bit uh, during the past century, I'd say. Uh, even before that, I guess you would say. And uh, it's a weird thing for me because I've, to me it's like I don't know you kind of see like all this different human interaction and creation and it's all kind of to me in the same sort of category of thought um, and especially for art I find that there's this weird especially amongst artists uh, particularly there's this weird sort of um, disliking of business and people who are into business people who are into finance and all this kind of stuff it seems like it's like oh it's like a hollow doubt version it's like oh it's capitalist they're trying to like siphon all the creativity and art and individuality out of me and then you have this other side of business where they sort of see uh artists as these sort of whiny pretentious um sort of useless to society uh, not really productive in any sense of the word and um, you know it's like this weird uh, duality going on and I've experienced it in my own way because I have my mother who is uh, an artist from you know when she was younger she's a graphic designer she was a painter her uh, life ambition was art and making art uh, mostly with painting and drawing and then you have my dad who was a very successful businessman and uh, he's very rigid in terms of understanding business understanding trade understanding finance so I have these two sort of schools of thought uh, that are basically influencing me uh, in a large degree and I think uh, there's this notion that I feel, especially from either artists or other business people, it's like they sort of go off into their own directions and they don't want to mingle with each other. Uh, you know, a lot of artists don't like business people for the, the reasons I brought up. And to me, that's very strange because to me, they're sort of very similar into one another. You know, they're both very creative uh, ambitions people who are into business are very creative in the sense that they are looking towards uh, the consumer their customers the their people and thinking okay what can I do to make something that these people want they're creating something they have to be creative in that sense and the same thing with art you have to be creative in the sense it's like how can I make this art impact somebody in some way although that's uh, a thought that's not really that uh, relevant in this current uh, time period, a lot of artists uh, tend to not really care about making an impact on people. They sort of mostly care about uh, indulgence in their own sort of uh, fantasies of art. I shouldn't say most artists, but there's definitely a, a trend towards that, which I'm not too much of a fan of. And in music, you see this in the form of, uh, of noise music. It's not music, it's noise. Uh, it's just performance art. Uh, which I'm not really a fan of. I don't feel anything towards that. I don't think about anything. It's not uh, uplifting me spiritually, mentally, physically, in any sense of that word. And the same thing with business. There's a lot of business that's very inspiring to me in terms of how it's created. And there's a lot of businesses 
that are just very kind of, you know, they're not impressive uh, in any sense, and they're very uh, lackluster. To me, that's what Apple is right now. Apple used to be this very uh, amazing, innovative company, and now it's become this weird uh, plateau of a company where it's just like, all right, let's just keep pushing out the same shit and of lesser quality, and we'll just use our history as a way to ride along the wave, which I feel like, to me, it's not uh, going to be a long-lasting uh, business plan, at least in my view. But overall, you have art and business sort of working in their own sort of dimensions. And there's been times and periods where they try to, you know, integrate with each other in a very uh, interesting way. And I think that's starting to happen, especially in the past 20 or so years. We, um, we've we had like the, the hip hop, uh, you know, break ground in terms of popular music. And I think that was sort of what sort of started bringing the concept of the artist and the businessman together. Uh, where you have uh, a rapper, so to speak, before they were actually ever famous, let's say they came from, um, you know, the projects in the Bronx and they were drug dealers. I mean, even at its very base level, that's a form of being a businessman, so to speak. Uh, you're selling drugs, you have to uh, develop a customer base, you have to, uh, you know, figure out a way to make a profit. You know, it's very simplistic, but that's what it is. And you see them as they get older and they get more famous, they actually become more integrated and in actually creating legitimate businesses. You have like Beats by Dr. Dre, you have DJ Khaled doing his whatever m merchandise shit. And uh, for that, you had Walt Disney doing the same stuff. So there's overall, you look at um, the artists and the businessmen, they're not separate entities. They are in fact kind of like one of the same thing. They sort of do uh, very similar things. And I think that's a weird thing that we have, especially if you go to college. College, it's like everything's segregated into every little thing. And you have uh, the business school, and you have the art school, and you have the philosophy department. And, um, you know, as these colleges keep expanding and making new buildings, it's only segregating kids into more specific and avenues which I don't think is um, beneficial to anyone. I think if you, I think it's good to focus on one thing at a time, so that way you focus all your attention on it. But I also think that um, in order to do that, you need a foundation, and a foundation comes from learning like as much as you can about everything. And that's what I'm doing right now. I mean, I'll learn anything I want. Um, you know, I was reading a book on songwriting. Before that, I was reading a book on technical analysis for trading stocks. Now I'm reading the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And, uh, you know, next time I might be reading a, a biography of Stalin just because I want to learn about who that was. So to me, that's what uh, real education is in terms of I'm focusing on something specific and singular in my mind, which is being an artist. Uh, and de developing a business from that art and then having an education that's well-rounded in terms of everything. Because even though it might be something that on the surface might seem useless, it's actually going to help me focus into something more specific. Uh, and I think that education is sort of uh, shifting away from that. It's focusing more on making kids uh, hyper-specific in terms of their job fields and they're focusing on like very specific things. Um, you know, they'll like learn a major in linguistics, for instance, like someone says that. And, uh, you know, all they're learning about is whatever's related to language, um, which is, uh, to me, it's a problem. It's like you're focusing only on language and then you, you're sort of closing yourself off from being able to develop more from other aspects. You might learn a lot about language from, um, you know, reading uh, or taking like an art class, right? You take a painting class. You you might think that it doesn't apply to to linguistics, but then when you realize the creative process, you realize the creation of some sort of painting, you sort of uh, be able to relate that to the creation of a language in a sense, and you sort of have a different perspective on that. And I think that's an important part of education. I'm sort of drifting off from my original topic, but it's sort of related to that where you have art and business 
uh, in some ways very segregated from one another when in fact they're probably the most similar concepts uh, I can think of. I mean, you think of um, all the great uh, businessmen and all the great artists, um, anytime there's sort of a lack of their character or some sort of lack in their lives, whether it's like, all right, they're super wealthy, but uh, they're hated by everyone. They don't feel compassion towards people. They're sort of miserable. Uh, people like that are probably like, uh, you know, the Donald Trumps of the world, you know, say what you will about him. He's not exactly a happy person. And then you have the artist who's like, you know, making great art and whatever, very creative, but the, they don't make no money. Nobody respects them. Nobody buys their art. Nobody cares about their art. And those are people like Vincent van Gogh, um, even Tesla to some degree, even though he's not really an artist, but you know, debatable, whatever. But those are the kinds of people. And then you look at the people who bring those two worlds together and they manage to create something that's both fulfilling creatively and both fulfilling financially, which I think are both very important if you want to make your life as an artist or as a businessman. Um, so anyway, that's all I really have to talk about for that. And I hope you have a wonderful day.